Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Revolution Church. Uh, my name is Melissa Gray, and with me is my sister and friend, Carolina Soto. Thank you for being uh, here uh, today to uh, worship uh, with me and with our, our church family and all those watching online um, today, we welcome you. Uh, we ask that you would just greet your virtual neighbor in the chat right now to say hello. And uh, we are praying for an engaging and wonderful worship, worship experience this morning. So let's go ahead and get, go to God in prayer this morning. Father God, um, we um, adore you, God. We um, simply are in love with you and who you are, uh, God. We just Thank you for um, another day, God, of life, of health, of strength, Father God. And we just ask that you would just um, just be in the midst of our world, God, today, God. Be in the midst of our country, Lord God. Just be in the midst of our homes, our families, Lord Jesus, as there um, is so much going on today in our world, God. But we know that you hold our world in your hands, God. And so we ask that you would just continue to continue to be Lord of all. God, reign, rule, and just be sovereign as you are. God, we love you. We thank you. And we just offer this service up to you as a sacrifice. God, we just want to praise and worship you this morning. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you, Lord. And we are glad that we are called sons of the most high God. Amen. And daughters. Hallelujah.
of the most high God.
Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we come before you right now just to thank you once again for another Sunday, another day to worship you, another day to give you glory and honor and praise. We ask, God, that you would speak to us as only you can. Use your word, Lord God. Use me to speak something directly from you to touch hearts and minds that our lives, including my own, will be forever changed. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. A Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. It's so good to see you all this morning. My name is Pastor Devin Turner. I'm blessed to be the pastor of Revolution Church. And today we are talking about one of the most important subjects that we could ever talk about. Know Christ. We paid an ode to run DMC with the design here, but we wanted it to be very bold and wanted it to be very strong because it is so critical to our success in this thing called life, to know Christ. And so our focus point for this morning, we're going to jump right into that focus point, is this. If I want to help people get to know Christ, I need flexibility when telling them what's right. If I want to help people get to know Christ, I need flexibility when telling them what's right. Now, let's get a working definition for the word flexibility. The word flexibility simply means the ability to adjust oneself to different conditions and environments. It's the capability of being without, I'm sorry, of bending without breaking. Now, one of the great things about us having flexibility when we're helping people to get to know Christ is that God wants to get his message across to so many different people in so many kinds of ways. And some people, if we can be honest, we've met some people like this feel like there's only one way to tell people about God. It's got to be delivered this way and this way only. I remember when I was in high school, there was a girl I went to high school with. At the time, I had a a new international version. So yes, when I was in high school, for all of our 20-somethings that are with us online today, I did not have a smartphone. There were no smartphones, okay? I didn't have a cell phone, okay? I had a beeper, okay? Just, you know, just, just, you know, give me a fist bump. Uh, let me get an amen in the chat if you had a beeper. Okay, yes, I'm dating myself. I know. I had a beeper. It was a pager I used to have on my hip. I thought I was so cool, you know, and uh, I used to look at it and people be paging me. Oh, I'm going to call them back when I get to a pay phone. Yes, there were pay phones. Now, the thing I want you to understand is when I was in high school with my beeper looking for a payphone to call somebody back, I was teaching a Bible study in my high school and there was a girl there who used to really ridicule me. Later on, I learned that she liked me. Creepy. But she ridiculed me because I was teaching the Bible study from the New International Version of the Bible and not the King James Version of the Bible. She believes that if you were not teaching from the King James Version translation of the Bible, it was not the true Bible. And so if you run into people that are very stuck in their ways, that are very pigeonholed in their thinking, that feel like this is the only way that God's word can be communicated, you got to be strong with them. You got to beat them over the head with the Bible. You got to call them out about their sexual orientation. You got to make sure you're dressed up. You got to make sure that it's a long service because if it's a short service, you ain't having a Holy Ghost time in the Lord, right? All this kind of stuff, right? Like God can't move in smaller moments and that God can't talk to people in t-shirts. Hello, I get hot easily. I cannot do the robe thing, okay? If you have run into people like that, you have felt that, oh, I love God, but I can't stand y'all. And there needs to be some flexibility. There's gotta be some flexibility in this God of all creativity who made all the heavens and the earth there are multiple ways to communicate his message. One thing that I uh, like to say oftentimes is this. I am so dedicated to the mission, but the method can change. The mission stays the same, but the method will change. Look at us right now. What are we doing right now, y'all? 
we are using technology, electricity, an electronic device, some type of wireless signal, whether it's a cell phone data plan or a Wi-Fi signal, somehow you are streaming this moment right where you are into an electronic device, a TV, a smartphone, a tablet, something. 30 years ago, you couldn't have done this. But if preachers during this pandemic did not adjust the method to say we need to have an online platform, they're missing on delivering the mission because they weren't willing to adapt with a different method. Just put in the chat, flexibility. I'm telling you that God wants you and I to help people to get to know him. And we have to be adaptable. We have to be flexible in the way we communicate God's truth. God can use hip hop music. God can use fashion design. God can use a doctor's practice. God can use a podiatrist who works on feet. God can use a dentist. God can use a teacher. God can use construction work. God can and will use all things and everything because the Bible says that everything was made by him, through him, and for him. And when we put limitations on God, we put limitations on the mission of God, which is to help people to know him. Our focus point, if you don't remember anything else that we talk about this morning, remember this. If I want to help people get to know Christ, I need flexibility. I need adaptability when telling them what's right. Now, if you have a copy of the Bible today, you can open it to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're going to start at verse 19. The Apostle Paul, who was inspired by the Holy Spirit of God to write this book of the Bible, is speaking to the believers at the church of Corinth. And here's what he says, starting in verse 19. He says, even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. Let's pause. Let's pause right there. When you see slave, don't get nervous and don't get weirded out. It means a servant, a bond servant. Oftentimes in the biblical days, people would become a slave or a bond servant to work off a debt. Can you imagine if our credit card billing companies put us in slavery until we paid them back some of us would never get out okay we'd be swiping that card while we while we anyway so it's not the type of slavery that we experienced here in america the cruelty of white people and all that no 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 it's not that same type of thing it was basically working off your debt that you owed okay and so paul says hey i i'm a slave to all people i'm a servant to all people and i'm giving them christ i'm sharing the love of christ and i'll never work off this debt so i'm forever a servant of the people because jesus christ died on the cross for me he paid the price for my sin so i owe him by being a servant to them i'll say that again jesus christ paid the price for my sin so i owe him by being a servant to them. That's what Paul's talking about. Let's get back at verse 20. He says, when I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who follow the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. Even though I am not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. Look at verse 21. When I'm with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. Wow. 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 Man, my back's itching. That one felt good. Let's break that one down. That was weird. I said my back itched. Please forgive me. Ignore that part. Let's keep going. <laughs> I'm having fun this Sunday. Go figure. Let's keep going. So check this out. Paul says, he's, let me break down what's happening here. Um, in the biblical time there in the New Testament, you had Jews and, of course, you had Gentiles. Today, we still have Jews and Gentiles. Jews are people that were, it's an ethnic group um, that are calling themselves Jews. They practice Judaism. And then you have Gentiles, which is every other ethnicity. So you either got Jews or you got Gentiles. If you're a Jew, you were born Jewish. If you're a Gentile, you may be African-American, Asian, Asian-American, Indian, you know, Russian, you know, all these other ethnicities that are identified, they are considered Gentiles. Now, he says, now, when I was hanging with the Jews, I respected their belief system and, and, and their laws. 
I didn't like not do them. I mean, I, I was kind of kicking it with them as long as it wasn't contrary to the law of Christ. And then when I'm hanging with them, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm a servant to them as well. These Gentile dudes, I'm, I, I can kick it in any environment. I can go in any hood. I can be in, in any environment and I can make connections with people because I'm authentic with the way I interact with them, how I love on them, how I treat them. And, and God is connectable and relatable to each demographic. What is the Apostle Paul saying about a flexibility and adaptability? He's saying that like a chameleon can blend in with its environment, we as Christ followers should have flexibility and adaptability in how we share the love of Christ. I'll, I'll use myself as an example. If it's not making sense, hopefully it will with this. I could put on a suit and I have a college degree. My mom is, is my mom and dad were both educators. Um, I can speak very eloquently and articulate my words very, very clearly. I've been in corporate rooms. I've been in the White House, as some of you all know. Uh, during the Trump administration, I went in the White House to advocate for the prison reform bill to help bring more justice to the marginalized and the downtrodden that were victims of mass incarceration. And I was able to say that I was blessed to be a part of that bill moving forward. Not saying I agree with everything the bill did, but it did help to reduce some extreme things that were going on with, with, with people who are incarcerated. I've gone into all types of environments. I grew up in Forestville, Maryland, in a neighborhood called Forest Park. Done a lot of ministry in the community, been in DC, been all over the country doing ministry. I've been in environments where people speak slang. And because I, I'm a hip hop artist as well, I can use slang and I can connect to people there because it comes very natural to me because it's a part of my culture. I can speak in different environments. I can talk to people of different ethnicities. I can talk to people of different social economic statuses. I remember when one of my friends, shout out to my sister Jacqueline Cole, when I was in my 20s, she invited me to Yale and I went to Yale. Yes, I went to Yale and I spoke at Yale. I went to Yale and spoke at Yale, and I remember being in my 20s, and I was able to hold conversations with the headmasters of the Trumbo School, and I was talking to these people, not even about faith. I was talking to them about art because I was an art major, and I was talking to them about Monet, and I was talking to them about Impressionist paintings, and they're like, oh, wow, you know your stuff, sir, you know? And then I preached the gospel there at Yale as well and, and shared the love of Jesus Christ to hundreds of people. I'm not sharing this with you all to run down my resume. I'm just trying to give you practical examples of how you can be adaptable and flexible in different environments. Now, what's the main point that I wanna focus on about what I just said? I wasn't pretending to be somebody I wasn't. The Bible is not telling you and I to be fake, okay? If you never grew up in the hood, <laughs> you never been a part of the hip hop culture. Don't go walking into the hood. <laughs> you know, hey yo, Jesus Christ loves you so much. Word to your mother. Okay. <laughs> they gonna smack you and tell you to get the blank out of there, right? <laughs> right. But what I am saying is even if you don't speak slang, everybody speaks love. Real recognize real. Truth recognizes truth. I shared my story because that was how I was able to be flexible. But what's your way? How is God leading you to open up your mind to how you can communicate about the knowledge of Christ to people on social media, to people in your, your circle, your inner circle, your close friends? How could God want to use you in very creative ways or unorthodox ways? <laughs> there's, a young, there's a young man that uh, I met at a conference one time he started an organization called Loose Change to Loose Chains. Loose Change, like quarters, pennies, nickels, dimes, to Loose Chains. He was like a 13-year-old kid, and he heard about uh, child slavery. And, and he said, man, I want to do something about that. And so he had a little jar in his school, and he was walking around collecting change from his classmates and from kids in his school. And he started a whole nonprofit organization to help child help end child slavery. He was like a 13 year old abolitionist. That's a very creative way to help people to know Christ. And he did it because he had a strong passion and he was flexible. He didn't have a pulpit. He didn't have a big degree. <laughs> he didn't wear a suit, right? 
He didn't speak slang. He didn't talk like this and try to pretend he was somebody he wasn't. He was just being himself. A Caucasian 13-year-old kid in the Midwest, I believe he was from, but he had a heart for child slavery overseas, and he was authentic to himself. He was submitting himself to God's plan, and he was flexible enough to say, let's try this. And God used it. Focus point for this morning. If you don't remember anything else that we talk about today, I want you to remember this. If I want to help people get to know Christ, I can't be rigid. I can't be stiff. I need flexibility when telling them what's right. Let's get back to the text. The Apostle Paul said, hey, when I'm with the Jews, I'm, you know, I'm kicking it with the Jews, man. You know, I respect their law. He said, when I'm with the Gentiles, you know, I respect their stuff. But I don't break the law of Christ. One more thing I say. I told you all this before a few weeks ago. I'll say it again. I'm honored and blessed to co-labor in D.C. with people who think different than me have different sexual orientations than me, worship different gods than I do, but we rally together around the commonality of ending gun violence. And I am humbled, and I don't take this lightly. With all sincerity, I am honored to be a leader in this movement in the city, in Washington, D.C. And when we start our meetings, people will often ask me, Pastor Devin, will you lead us in prayer? And I know that not everybody believes in my God, but they know there's power in my God. <sighs> they know there's power in my God and there's power in my prayers. And there's a mutual respect. I don't break the law of Christ, but I respect and I love and I listen and they in turn respect and love and listen. Now, some of y'all are like, well, Pastor Devin, why you on a call with people that don't believe in Jesus Christ and people that's got different sexual orientations and, and people that are using profanity in the streets sometimes with stuff that they organize and why are you spending time with them? I'm just being like Jesus. Our Lord and Savior spent so much time not in a synagogue church building, not with Pharisees and Sadducees, religious leaders. He spent time with tax collectors, sinners, drunkards as they were labeled, misfits and outcasts of society, people who had a lot to offer society, but society didn't want to offer anything to them. I value every human life. I value my leaders that I'm honored and blessed to serve this city with. And I tell you all that you need a perspective change. If you are going to help people to know Christ, you need some adaptability and flexibility in your approach to helping people to know Christ. Because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And people won't care to know your Christ until they know you care about who they are, even if they're not in Christ. Let's let that marinate a little bit. Let it marinate a little bit. Because some of you all would be heckling the Apostle Paul for his strategy of ministry. Why are you hanging with them and, 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 and they, they submit themselves to these laws and you over here hanging with them and, you know, they, they, they practice this stuff? I kick it with all kinds of people, but I don't stop obeying the law of Christ. See, when you know who you are in Christ Jesus, you help other people know who, excuse me. When you know who you are in Christ Jesus, you help other people know who they can be in Christ Jesus. <laughs> I'll say that again. When you know who you are in Christ Jesus, you can help other people know who they can be in Christ Jesus. But when you're so insecure about your faith, that you're afraid to get in conversations with people of other theologies. You're, you're afraid to get around people who think different than you or have different sexual orientations than you. Oh, no, they're, they're unclean. They're unclean. <laughs> what God do you serve? I thought you served the most powerful God. I thought you served the God that sits on high. Do you know Christ? 
or do you know fear? Because you don't really know Christ. You just know religion. See, religion will have you understanding certain aspects of the Bible and having biblical knowledge. But it won't help you to apply God's word. Application of God's word comes through relationship with God himself. If you submit yourself to the law of Christ, you can walk in any environment and you know your spirit is good. Because the God in me is good. A couple times I've been in clubs and did ministry. And some of y'all would never go in a club. <gasps> Pastor Devin went in a club. <gasps> yes. One time I went into a go-go. I got invited to a go-go. This was a few years back um, when go-go had got outlawed in Prince George's County, Maryland. Oh, for those of you all that are with us from uh, outside of the D.C. area, go-go is a, is a type of music, very beautiful, powerful music right here from Washington, D.C. Uses a lot of drums and percussion. And it's super, super dope. You should Google go-go music and have a blast. But go-go music got outlawed a few years back in Prince George's County, Maryland, because so many murders were connected to go-go music. So go-go music was only allowed in the state of Maryland in the next county over. Not in Prince George's County, but we had to go to Waldorf, Maryland. And one of my buddies got invited to go. And he said, yo, yo, Devin, why don't you come with me? And we went up in the club. Girls were shaking, dropping it low, you know. They was partying. Um, they was dancing. They called us on stage. Hey, man. And Gogo was always like reverb on the mic. Hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. Hey, y'all, we got some real special people in here, Mo, Mo, Mo. We, we got some pastors in the house, Mo, Mo. All y'all mother elves that got love for Jesus, put your hands in the air. Hey. <laughs> and I went up in that joint and I prayed. I prayed. And when I got done, the girls are back to clapping. You know, if you don't know what that is, don't Google that. But they get back at it. Another time I got asked to pray for a local uh, uh, w, uh, WKYS. It's a, a hip hop station, R&B station right here in the city. We were doing an event and uh, they asked me to pray before the, act, before the talent came up. And I was able to talk with some of the artists and, and connect with some of the artists. And I later... Uh, mm, Two of those artists I led to Christ and I baptized them and they wanted to get married, this, this, this man and wife. And um, they started coming to Revolution Church before, uh, before he got a job working with Janet Jackson in Atlanta. And um, before they moved to Atlanta, I baptized them a couple years ago. And then I officiated their wedding. And uh, some celebrities were at the wedding, uh, including Jay-Z's nephew. Sean Carter's uh, nephew was there, and I shared the gospel. Man, I'm getting emotional. <clears throat> but why am I telling you this? I'm telling you because if you are so rigid in your traditions, and you put God in such a box that God only wants to move in these type of environments in this kind of way, you will miss the mission because you're married to your method. I told you earlier, I'm committed to the mission of Christ, but the method can change. Hmm. Focus point. If you don't remember anything else we talk about this morning, remember this. If I want to help people get to know Christ, I need flexibility when telling them what's right. Whew, I'm getting emotional. God is good. Somebody just put in the chat, thank you for flexibility. Just thank God for flexibility. He wants to reach everybody, y'all. He wants to reach everybody, y'all. He wants to reach everybody, y'all. And he wants to use us to do it. Are you willing to bend from your rigidness to operate with his righteousness? Let's get back to the scriptures here. Let's go to verse 22. The apostle Paul is talking to the believers at the church in Corinth again, and he says this. When I am with those who are weak, 
I make fun of them and tell them they weak. Is that what your Bible says, Brian? The Bible says when I am with those who are weak, I share their weaknesses. For I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with only religious people that believe in my denomination and my tradition. Is that what your Bible says, Nick? I'm talking to Nick and Brian here. They with me today, y'all. No, he says, I try to find common ground with everybody doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. My God, verse 22, let's get it on the screen. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weaknesses. One of my one of my cousins is homosexual and I love him. And his partner died last year and um you know I prayed and sent him some messages of comfort and condolences and I hurt for my cousin. My cousin was hurting so bad. Just because people are different than you doesn't mean you can't have empathy and compassion and share with them and their weaknesses and their suffering. The Apostle Paul's method said, I'm those who are weak, I share in their weaknesses. If I want the weak to come to Christ, I try to find common ground with everyone. Too many of us spend too much time focusing on what we disagree on. We spend too much time focusing on our differences, not on our commonalities, not on where we have common ground. We don't empathize enough. We don't sympathize enough. We just don't care enough. We have a colonizing mentality that we just want to preach the gospel to you. You get saved and then you get in line with our theological traditions. And if you don't, we're going to cast you out of here, you heathen. If that's your mentality, that's not flexibility. But let's go just straight to the matter. That's not the gospel. That's not the God of the Bible. That's man-made tradition masking itself under the auspice of religion. Religion will destroy you. Religion will destroy your relationships. Religion will destroy your reputation. Religion will destroy your connection to God. God does not ask of us to be devoted to religion. He invites us into a relationship with him where he is Lord and Savior. He is Father. He is our God. We are his sons. We are his daughters. We are his people. Focus point. If you don't remember anything else this morning, remember this. If I want to help people get to know Christ, I need flexibility when telling them what's right. Mm. If you're with me, just put in the chat, I'm still with you. I'm still with you. Man, this passage blesses me. The Apostle Paul says, I try to find common ground with everyone. <laughs> what if everybody that called themselves Christians just apply that one verse? <laughs> Look at verse 22. What if everybody that calls themselves a Christian, no matter their race, no matter their, their socioeconomic status, no matter where they lived, no matter their gender, no matter their sexual orientation, no matter their, no matter their political affiliation, if everybody tried to find common ground with everyone, doing everything they can to save some, what if that was the one verse people really, really took the ball and ran with? Our world would be such a better place. Verse 24, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one gets the prize. So run to win. 
All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. He said, I ain't playing no games. I'm about my mission. I'm about this business. Verse 27, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. <laughs> wow, that's a loaded passage. There's so much treasure in there. We got a few more minutes left. Let's unpack what we can. Verse 24, the Apostle Paul gives us this metaphor of an athlete running to win a prize that perishes, but he runs to win a prize that's eternal. Verse 26, he says, I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. Have you ever seen somebody shadow box? <laughs> Since we're using uh, athletic metaphors. <laughs> shadow boxing, if you're not sure what that is, shadow boxing is when you just kind of, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're basically just kind of punching at the air. And, you know, s s some, some guys and some girls look real, real tough. When you just punch it at the air, you know, <laughs> stick and move, <laughs> float like a butterfly, <laughs> you know, sting like a bee, you know. <laughs> but when they get in a real fight, <laughs> all that shadow boxing is is nice. But like the great philosopher Mike Tyson once said, everybody's got a plan till you get hit in the mouth. Now, Paul said, I'm not just over here pretending. I'm really in this competition. I'm really in this athletic exchange, but it's not for some prize that's gonna fade away, some gold medal or bronze medal or silver medal. No, nothing like that. I am running a race. I am competing on an athletic level. I am that focused. I am that determined. I spend that much time in my word. I spend that much time praying. I spend that much time meditating. I spend that much time looking for opportunities to engage my brothers, my sisters, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, people on social media. How can I strategically and lovingly engage with them, sharing weaknesses and open up my heart about my struggles and how God saved me? Notice, notice what I said. I'm not looking for every opportunity to bash them over the head and say, you're wrong, you're a sinner, you're sleeping with people, you're going to hell, you shouldn't be doing that. Oh, God knows you're wrong, you nasty, you nasty. No, 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 no. The Apostle Paul said, um, I become like all people that I might win some. You know, I, I can fit in in different environments because I'm authentically connecting to people on a personal level and I share what God has done for me. And he says he does that as intentionally as an athlete does. If you know about any athletes, not just people who run races, I'm talking about any athletes, boxers, football players, basketball players, soccer players, golf, tennis, any sport that you can think of, rugby, name it and I'm about to talk to it, they train diligently every day to get their bodies in shape to compete for a prize that will fade away. Now, I'm not dissing athletes, but I'm making a point that if an athlete can be that disciplined and that focused to win a prize that will fade away, how much more should we be flexible and stretching these spiritual muscles and bending and looking and seeking for opportunities to go and be the people that God has called us to be? The Apostle Paul, he gives us this athletic metaphor and he says it like this. Verse 27, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. You know what one of the saddest things in the world would be? For God to use you, right? With your unflexible self, with your overly judgmental self. And some people do come to faith in Christ, even in the midst of your hypocrisy. And when you die and stand before God, he looks at you and says what he says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, which won't come on the screen, but listen close. Depart from me. I never knew you. 
Matthew chapter 7 is one of the scariest passages in the Bible. Jesus says, many people will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did I not do many wonderful works and do all this great stuff in your name? And they say, yeah, depart from me. I never knew you. In other words, yeah, I used you like you tried to use me through religion. I used you and still told people about my gospel. But you were disqualified from the prize because you never were connected to me. You were connected to the idea of me. You were connected to religion. And you used your religion to make other people feel like crap as you told them about themselves instead of telling them about yourself and how nasty you were and how messed up you have been and how you have fallen short of my glory and how I cleaned you up and blessed you. But we didn't even get to that part because you just wanted to use me being God as a prop for your performance. Instead of letting me use you as a part of my plan. See, on Judgment Day, some people are going to be shocked, y'all. They did all this talking about Jesus. But like the old song says, everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. And that's real. So, not to intentionally end on a somber moment, but as we close for today, I want you to think about where you stand with God. Are you truly saved? Do you truly know him as Lord and Savior? Or do you just know religion? Are you a person that can tell everybody about themselves, but you don't take time to pray and ask God, Lord, show me me. Show me the flaws within my character. Show me how I need to be more like you, O Lord God. Lord God, help me to be humble before you. If you're not praying prayers like that on a regular basis, you should. Because some people will have a shocking revelation on Judgment Day that think they're with God and they're really not. You say, Pastor Devin, how can I apply this message to my life? How can I take this one step further in my spiritual journey? Here's how. Our next steps for the day are this. Identify one way that you can be more flexible in how you tell others about your faith and use it this week while you interact with someone. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, this is easier said than done. But God, we know, we know, God, that we have some rigidness in all of us and we need more flexibility. Lord, would you help us to be more like you, to stop boxing in your will, to stop pigeonholing how you might want to use us. God, would you help us this week to truly live out the things that we learned today? And would you help us to remember, God, that if we want to help people to get to know you, O oh Christ, we need flexibility when telling them what's right. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you're with us this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I started to allude to it just a few moments ago. The bad news is you're lost in your sin and that you deserve to go to hell when you die. Now, you may say, Pastor Devin, why are you talking about hell, man? How do you know I deserve to go to hell? God gave us 10 laws or 10 commandments. And the Bible says that if we break one of those laws, we're guilty of sin. And that we deserve to go to hell when we die. If we've ever told a lie, if we've ever took something that didn't belong to us, if we ever had a sexual act or a sexual thought with somebody we're not married to, if we ever disrespected our parents even, even as children, we're guilty of sin. I'm the pastor of this church and I've broken all of God's laws, man. I'm, 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 I'm guilty. I deserve to go to hell and so do you. That's the bad news. But the good news is I will not go to hell and you don't have to either. Why? Because God loves you and God loves me. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life, and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. If you're with me right there through the screen and you say, Pastor Devin, that's me. I need Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. I want to pray with you right where you are. Let's pray together. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for my friends that are with me right now. I pray, oh Lord God, that they will confess their sin to you and that they will put all their hope and trust in you. That they will believe in you and that they will have everlasting life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to click that link in the chat, revolutiondc.org slash decision. There, I want you to fill out that form and I want you to press the submit button and one of our online ministers will connect with you within one day so that you can grow more in your spiritual journey with Jesus Christ. And I want to say congratulations on the best decision of your life. The best is yet to come with you understanding this God who created you and understanding your mission to help people know Christ. 
We want to celebrate with you and we want to help you grow. So please fill out the form today and we can walk with you in the next steps. If you'd like to celebrate and actually worship God with us through giving, I want you to click that link in the chat that just came in there. It's called revolutiondc.org slash give. There you can safely and securely put your financial information in and all the proceeds will go towards reaching lost souls, helping to meet physical needs and spiritual needs all over the world. Because of your generosity, we've been blessed to help families stateside and abroad with food, clothing, shelter. We've paid bills all the way to groceries and we've helped kids with scholarships that are in college. Uh, we've helped feed the homeless. We've dug a well in Africa. We're doing so much, and it's because of your generosity. And as you continue to support this ministry, we will continue to bless others with the gospel and the love of Jesus Christ. Let's take a moment to pray over the offering. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this opportunity to give. And we ask and pray, O oh Lord God, that you would bless all those who have finances to give and that you would bless those that want to give but don't have finances to give. We ask that, Lord God, you would move mightily in the leadership of the church to continue to be led by your spirit, to use all the resources to bless others. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you wanted to give through your phone, you can text your amount to 855-927-3593. That's 855-927-3593. And if you'd like to give with the Give Plus app, you can use that app and type in the word Revolution Church in Washington, D.C. And our zip code is 20019. Our next announcement for today is if you'd like to get text updates, you can text the word Revolution with no quotes to 844-949-3006. That's 844-949-3006. 3006 and we'll send you updates about what we're doing in the ministry and how we're and, and, and what other events we're doing uh, if you want to be in the know make sure that you sign up for our text updates last but not least if you want to grow in your spiritual walk with god on a deeper level other than just sunday mornings here with us you can uh, email us groups at revolutiondc.org the men meet every first and third tuesday through google hangout the women meet every second and fourth tuesday through zoom Again, that email is groups at revolutiondc.org. Well, that's all the time we have this morning. I'm so honored and blessed to be able to spend time with each and every one of you. Thank you for taking time to spend time with Revolution Church. Love each and every one of you. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday right here at 11 a.m. God bless.